Welcome back to Love Bulls News. If you haven't already, make sure you like and sub to the channel. So y'all know if I'm getting on here early in the morning, it's something that just came hot off the press, y'all. So we are going to get into the full report in regards to the Fulio case, meaning what was said, what they have investigated, when did they start, we going A to Z. This report is 18 pages long. Y'all know I am not winded at all. So we are going to go ahead and skim through these 18 pages, grab what we need, leave what we don't, and that's going to be that. I hope y'all having a good morning, and let's see what we find out. So this is page 1 of 18, as y'all can see on the screen. Isaiah Chance is where they're starting at. That is Gutazay. So Gutazay has been posted everywhere. He was former, I think he was former NHG, um, and now he fell out with them about three, four months ago, allegedly, and he's attached to the Fulio killing now. So, let's see what they're saying on page one. The defendant poses a threat of harm to community because the defendant is presently charged with, oh, they're going to try to deny his bond. Uh, with trying to make him seem dangerous, trying to make it seem like he definitely would threaten the environment. That's how they're going to come because they want the judge to know that as soon as this is open, as soon as this is presented to prosecutors, everyone, hey, this guy is a danger to the community. We need it to be known. <laughs> Page one, they're starting off letting it be. But he is. You guys just literally went to a public establishment Guests stay, people who travel from out the country, out of town, wherever, stay with their families and just open fire like you didn't have any sense. So, the defendant planned with four other individuals to travel to Tampa from Jacksonville to kill the victim, Charles Jones, as retaliation in ongoing Jacksonville war, gang war. So, right now, they, they're they already kind of placing Isaiah Chance, gut as a as the primary person who planned out this event. They brought two AR-style rifles and a Glock firearm to commit this crime. All right. The defendants tracked the victim and his friends. Y'all, these people are not playing. To three public locations. So it is confirmed they watched him the entire night, followed him place to place, which is kind of what we knew. Three defendants got out of their vehicles, masked and armed, and began firing multiple, multiple times at three vehicles. Three vehicles were involved. So we only seen Fulio's car, and I think there was another gray car. But they fired at three vehicles. Wow. So basically, they were trying to kill everybody that came to the party. If you came there to have a good time with Charles, like he was saying on his live, they you that's why you got three people that really had nothing to do with it that got hit. Luckily, they survived. But shooting at three vehicles is crazy and unhinged. So let's go. All right. So the armed assailants, is, yeah, they fired a barrage of bullets. Uh, let's see. Wow. So, y'all, yeah. they picked up Gutterzay and put him on an ankle monitor when they picked him up after this shooting. So, when they put him on the ankle monitor, a week before they actually picked him up, which was last week, I think he got picked up, like, what? It was, like, the 1st or 2nd of August. So, he told them that he was going to take the ankle monitor off and run. So that goes back to page one where we already knew that they were trying to let it be known. He is a threat. He's high risk. He's a flight risk. He does not need to be placed on bond anymore. He does not need to be released. None of that. Because he will run. He will cause problems. He will make us chase him down. They don't want the problems. Okay. All right. So let's keep it moving. Probably let the defendant committed such crimes. And based on the defendant's past and present patterns of behavior, consideration of the criteria in Florida statute 903046 of any relevant facts that no conditions of release. I knew they was trying to do that. Release or bail will be reasonably 
protect the community from risk of physical harm, ensure the presence of the defendant at trial, or assure the integrity of the judicial process. They don't want him out. And they're going to do this to the other four people also. They do not want them out. But it's the truth. They are flight risk. They are a danger to society at this point. Regardless if Julio Fulio was your target, when you opened a barrage of bullets at a public place, a hotel at that, you don't know who was sitting in their car, who could have been just running to the car to get a charger, a kid, whatever. They didn't care. So I definitely agree with this. We don't need anybody like that out while they're going through this process. All right, let's go. They're just talking about the retaliation of the game war, which we already went over. So let's get into what happened. So we do see a lot of people making videos saying the holiday in. Clearly, this is not this did not happen at the Holiday Inn. It says at home two suites, the silver Chevy Cruze drives by the victim's park vehicle twice and then leaves. So as you guys know, the black car that we see, the black charger, scat pack, whatever we see, riddled with bullets was Fulio's car. These people had been riding past him in the parking lot because, as you know, he hadn't gotten into the hotel. He hadn't checked in. So he was clearly sitting in the vehicle or there was only that driver that was in the vehicle, which was Omerta 5, if you guys want to look him up. He was the driver of the vehicle. So Julio Fulio could have very well been inside the building while they were trying to get checked in. However it was, they rode by him twice in the vehicle. And they just wanted to make sure who was in there. Give me a second. Who was in the car and they can make sure their target was there. All right. So vehicles killing Charles Jones, shooting victims, Xavier Edwards, Gino Norris, and Camille Bentley. Now, these are three names I do have to look into. Of course, we know one is on murder. But the other two names, we got to figure out who they are. I'm sure some people may already know. So based on the investigation, three shooters in the black Chevy Impala are Rashad Murphy, Sean Gothright, and Davion Murphy. So as you guys know, if we go back to page one and two, they speak a lot about Isaiah Chance actually planning out the incident, planning out this attack on Julio Fulio, but he was not one of the shooters. So that is very well confirmed right there in your face. All right, so the victims had parked on the south side of the building near an overhang by the front door. The Impala instead made a hard right and drove the long way around the home two suites as, as if it was to avoid line of sight with the victims. So we have some clear vi videos of this incident, very, very clear videos. They had them the same day it occurred. They had so much footage, so... Sometimes you got to realize, even though you can't see a camera, it doesn't mean a camera isn't there. Another thing that hurt them this time was the Tesla. Teslas have cameras all around it, and that allowed everybody to get seen broad day. You guys are parking at well-established businesses. These aren't mom-and-pop stores that you're going to. You're parking at well-established businesses thinking that you're going to avoid the sight of a camera. They thought they was in Jacksonville. That's what it was. All right, so the crews can be seen driving south on North McKinley at a high rate of speed, running a red light, pulling into the home two suites parking lot. The crews did not. They're talking about the Chevy crews, you guys. They had a great cruise they was driving, which we later found out one, I think it was Sean was driving his sister's car, but it's actually his car and his name, or it's his car, but it's in the sister's name. And then you have the Murphy brothers who are actually driving their mother's car. But we're going to get to that in a minute. All right. So let's see. Did not take the long way around. Instead, it passed the victims along the south side and then made a U-turn on the west side of the building as the Impala Park. Hmm. The crews then drove back the way it came in and passed the victims a second time before leaving the parking lot. So they were messy. They were messy with this. And this happened at 4 in the morning. So, it's either... Well, we already know that he was intoxicated, pills, drinking, because it was his birthday. But had he not been, he may have kind of picked up that something was going on. Because 4 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to see too many people on the road. And there shouldn't be anybody passing by you twice. 
at 4 o'clock in the morning. That's definitely a red flag. All right. So then drove back the way it came past the victims a second time before leaving the parking lot. At approximately 4.38 hours, three shooters exit the parking lot and began working their way towards the victim's location on foot. A Tesla camera in sentry mode captured not only both suspects' vehicles driving right in front of it, but also three shooters on foot passing it to get to the victim. I'm going to read that again. A Tesla camera in sentry mode. I don't even know what sentry mode is, y'all. I don't got no Tesla. Sentry mode captured not only both suspect vehicles driving right in front of it, but also three shooters on foot passing it to get to the victims. <laughs> wow. They need to sue Elon. They need to sue Elon. He was he came up with something. I see why they want everybody to get into these electric vehicles because it would solve so many crimes. You can't do nothing. The three shooters were described as follows. Shooter one was an average-sized male with dark skin exposed above his face mask, wearing military-style black leather boots, long dark jeans, and with a rip in the left knee, and a black leather belt. So, yeah, that's not very descriptive, but they were covered head to toe. I guess that's what they're trying to get at, that they had one goal in mind, and that was to take him out. They came Call of Duty ready, dressed, and they just was trying to take him out shooter two was a skinny male taller wearing a dark blue hip hoodie this is who we seen in the video dark blue hoodie and long pants shooter two had a lighter skin complexion that's goth sean gothright i may be saying his name wrong so he's shooter number two he was armed with a long ar style rifle so there we go confirmed we had so many people throwing out names Involving people that were not really involved in the situation in the situation, which was not right. So Let's get past that All right, so let's see where is shooter number three y'all All right shooter three was heavier than the other two shooters and was wearing all black clothing with the orange ski mask orange ski mask on at night and you committing this type of crime shooter three was also armed with an ar style rifle equipped with an apparent brass catcher so they had shell catchers they had a bag on a gun so that they wouldn't drop any shell casings it's almost like these are the dumbest want to be smart criminals you guys drove y'all family members cars to commit a murder in another city when everybody in Florida knows that they snap pictures of you on the highway. Like when you riding through certain tolls or certain areas, you'll see where it's like a big overhang that got a sign on it and psh, there's a big flash in your face as soon as you ride past it because they're getting the tag number and they get your face because guess what? They're not playing. They're not playing. So they see all these people not only at the actual murder scene, but they see y'all along the way driving to commit the murder three hours away in 4K. That camera is so clear. If you ever got a red light ticket, ever got anything from them saying you ain't, you ran or you didn't do the right thing on the highway, they see you clear as day. You see right in the car. All right. Let's go, y'all, because I got stuff to do. What time it is? People got real careers around in the mud. All right, so let's see. A parent have been intentionally targeted as multiple bullet strikes hit his back window. Now, here's what's not making the most sense because we seen the blue hoodie in the video. He was shooting basically towards that passenger side, but he was in front of the vehicle. We seen a shooter that was also in between the cars that we thought would have had some type of crossfire with the blue hoodie. But the back window was shot out. So somebody had to be shooting from behind the vehicle. Wow. So they basically. Jeez Louise. Based on the video, video surveillance footage obtained at Teasers, Truth 18, and Home to Suites, the occupants, Chance and Andrews, of the Chevy Cruze are acting as lookouts and tracking the movements of the victims by first placing the targeted victim, Charles Jones, in their line of sight before the occupants of the Chevy Impala arrive at the first two locations. So they were doing it like a relay. Basically, 
they were playing with these people the whole night. They were playing with, with Fulio and his whole little cruise the whole night. So even if you did say you just seen that cruise, you're going to be looking for the cruise, but they're sending an Impala to actually be the one to watch and do what needs to be done and gather the rest of the information because you're not watching that one. So if you're looking, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot because they put a little bit of planning, but not even half as much they should have put. You shouldn't be planning to hurt nobody anyways in this manner. But it's like y'all wanted to plan this out, felt like y'all was doing something, but y'all really wasn't. So it's kind of weird. So photos from the license, license plate readers confirmed both vehicles were a consistent match to include color tint, rims, trim, and all other physical characteristics to the suspected vehicles. They were seen on camera to include damages to the, the Silver Cruise. Now, one thing people need to understand is any identifying information, like a broken headlight, a piece of paint, all that stuff, you cannot take those type of vehicles to the ground because the car stands out. It's been noted through here multiple times that that Chevy Cruise was damaged. So, it's like you, you recognize it. You see it on the highway. You recognize it wherever it's going. This right here we have on the screen is basically a recount of all of the stops they made. So the first one is the Chevy Cruze, which you can't see the line on top. But the second one is the black Chevy Impala. As you can see, 621-1958 Hours University Boulevard and Dolphin Drive. They're showing you as they're driving there, they took I-75 and then got on 275 to get to Tampa from Jacksonville. Hey, that's the first car to cruise. Here we go, Chevy Impala, I-75 to 275. They're doing the exact same routes, going the exact same way with things. Yes, they did get on the highway from different spots, but guess what? They got on at the same time. Somebody pulled over and waited for the other because they show was en route. All right. Both vehicles were placed into FC. So they're basically making these vehicles as evidence. Oh, okay. So on 626, so June 26, approximately 645 hours, Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office located the suspect 2018 Silver Cruise pulling into a hotel parking lot at 5945 Oak Brook Parkway in Norcross, Georgia. So they drove the vehicle or they went back to Georgia. What? So all these people just got picked up in Jacksonville. They drove back to Georgia. Police completed, uh, tried to complete a traffic stop. A black male jumped out the driver's seat ran on foot ignoring law enforcement commands to stop the black male was arrested for obstruction and he was identified as the defendant Rashad Murphy Rashad Murphy was driving the suspect silver Chevy Cruze seen on video at the scene of the homicide during its capture in Georgia so the Murphys went to Georgia now we're still looking for Davion they got eyes on Rashad from the beginning they got eyes on Rashad, they got eyes on Sean, they got eyes on Isaiah, they had eyes on Alicia from the beginning. The only person we are not seeing come up in this paperwork yet is Davion. Davion seemed like he didn't even tell his brother or cousin what he had planned. Hmm. <laughs> Y'all better pay attention. This more than just a murder. This is like, wait a minute. Y'all even backdooring and not telling each other stuff. Well, I guess it's in his best interest. All right. So, anyways, let's go. The suspect Chevy Impala was captured in Polk County near the house of Sean Gothright's family member, Witness One. What? The suspect Chevy Impala was captured in Polk County near the house of Sean Gothright's family member, Witness One. Detectives made contact with Witness One and obtained a statement from them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who house this is? Because his family member is a witness. You won't be seen as no witness if you ain't see what you ain't need to be seeing. 
and made a statement. Mm. Y'all had to give me a little sip of coffee. This is getting good, y'all. This is getting good. These people is already telling the family members telling. Gothra ate dinner at the witness one's house, went into a bedroom to rest for a short time, and then left to return to Jacksonville. Mmm. He left the Chevy and Paul at the residence and drove away in a gold Toyota 2004 Toyota 4 runner. So he switched cars. He left that car parked. He didn't go home. He went to a family member's house, but left that car parked because he knew it was hot. He knew they had already been looking for the car and jumped into another car. They were trying to be smart, but it's like some hood smart stuff. Like maybe in the 80s, you would have got away with what you're doing. Advised that some of these camera bags Gothright allegedly used to store his photography equipment when this one provided consent <gasps> for detectives to review their video surveillance camera footage. Oh, they offered the ring camera to the detectives. His family member is not going down for this. Oh, they tired of you, Sean. They tired of you. You done brought these problems to these people. They they not about to go to jail for you. They finna be fully cooperating to make sure they have everything they need inside the house for a couple of hours. Came back outside approximately 18, 30 hours. Sean Gothright appeared to be wiping or cleaning the vehicle's exterior and interior door handles with the rag. Okay. He's trying to clean off fingerprints. Because they was in the car. He was driving through. So he wanted to clean out the fingerprints just in case they searched the car. But at this point, detectives and everybody watching you, the camera done caught you. On 626, during the evening hours, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office conducted a traffic stop. They were already watching him. They didn't even stop him in the other vehicle. So whereas in, he's probably thinking, it's no connection. I'm not even in the same car. They've been watching the whole time. Pulled them over in a forerunner. As you know, the forerunner was not in Tampa. But because they've been watching you behind, they knew you was in that forerunner. Okay. So the search also revealed a bag consistent to one scene being transferred from the Impala to the forerunner at his family member's house. So telling you, they've been watching them. Inside the bag, they located 223 rifle live rounds. Oh. And approximately nine rifle spent casings. They also located a loose nine millimeter barrel and loose firing pin belonging to a Glock. <sighs> So y'all remember when we said they put the bag on the gun, they put the shell case and catcher, the shell catcher on the gun. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they just found. All right. So they spent rifle cases found in Sean Gothright's vehicles did have a presumptive match awaiting FDLE confirmation to two prior shootings. One of the shootings was a homicide. This, this is a menace. Y'all got to put him away. A homicide on May 23rd, 2024 in close proximity to a girlfriend of defendant Isaiah Chan. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. In Jacksonville, Florida, the second shooting was a prior attempt on the life of the victim. What? The prior shooting was a, a prior attempt on the life of victim number one, Charles Jones. October 7, 2023. That's when his foot got shot? So they tried to kill him. These same people. These same people tried to kill this boy before. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. This is crazy. This is, they hated him. They really hated him. And this is a menace. This is a menace. Because not only is they about to be fighting Fulio murder charge, but you also about to be fighting this other one that you caught on May 23rd. And you also finna get another attempted murder uh, attached to you from when you shot him on the 7th. All these cases, he's riding around with a bag. Okay. Man, people, something else. All right. 
Oh my God, I'm gonna have to wrap this up, y'all. I didn't eat my breakfast. My breakfast in here getting cold. I gotta get ready for work. All right, during that search warrant, JS observed in plain sight items of evidence that appear could possibly be linked to our homicide in Tampa to include a Glock 9mm. The gun! Whoa! With an extended magazine and a box of Generation 5 Glock millimeter firearm. I don't even think we need to read no more. This is also observed a poster of a drawing with fist making a thumbs down symbol and the words bully down hanging on Chance's bedroom. What? What? Hanging on Chance's bedroom wall. So good as they got a bully down on his wall. Hmm. JSO detectives indicated they knew from their intimate knowledge of the rivalry between ATK and Six Block Games was a diss. Showing disrespect to the victim, Charles Jones, the Glock 9mm located at the Isaiah Chance's house did not nib him back. T- I don't know what that means, nib him back to this homicide okay so whatever gutters they had at his house that didn't get linked but sean is in some hot water sean is in some hot hot water that water is really hot all right so let's see so we're also found in the same safe as the rifles what during the searching side, okay, we already got that Sean's house had the gun, so they're basically going back over that search. We're going to keep it moving because we're not getting too far. We got about six more pages. And, all right. Sean often uses, which is led to code of All right, so this is talking about the warrant. Let's try to get to some of the good stuff, y'all. We got to read through this. All right, here we go. Let's get into the Airbnb. A screenshot of an Airbnb rental confirmation was taken, which read, Hello, Rashad. Thanks for your reservation. So Rashad Murphy actually reserved the Airbnb in his name. They're trying to do everything to make it seem like they're not in Tampa, but you reserve an Airbnb in your name. Per HOA policy, the renter needed to submit a photo of a valid ID. Around the same time the screenshot of the Airbnb confirmation text was taken, a photo of Rashad Murphy's Florida identification identification card was also taken. So he uploaded his ID. (laughs) All right. This was proven to be the Airbnb the defendants stayed at during their time in Tampa. I'm telling y'all, it's just getting dumber and dumber at this point. Like, you reserve the Airbnb in your name. (sighs) You riding around with shells from a high profile when you just committed. Like, what is happening here? They also got him on the Airbnb camera. So as you know, these homeowners, they do put cameras on the outside. They're not supposed to put them on the inside. So they do have footage of everybody arriving to the house. Witness 2. Hold up. I don't went too fast because we got witness 2. Related, he was hired via the Uber app to drive customer from Tampa to Jacksonville. Witness 2 related, he picked up three people at the Airbnb the defendant stayed at while in Tampa and took those same three people to an address known to detectives to be Sean Gothright's home in Jacksonville. He picked the defendants up from Tampa, drove them to Jacksonville. Oh, Oh, it's vibrant. It's not ring. It was a vibrant. Okay, and those are really clear, too. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. This is sad. This is sad, y'all. He got a cell. The cell site data from the An- Alicia Andrews phone show her phone traveling from Jacksonville, Florida to Tampa, Florida. The phone departed Jacksonville at approximately 1630 hours. All right. So they're basically confirming they're watching cell towers from the time she left. 
to the time they got in Tampa. Prior to departing to Teasers, Andrew's phone traveled to a McDonald's at 2205 Fletcher Avenue. Video footage was obtained from the McDonald's, which shows Andrew's in the front passenger seat of the cruise. Now, we kept talking about that gray Chevy cruise, gray Chevy cruise. She was riding in the cruise. He wiped down the cruise because anybody riding in there, he thought wiping it down was going to get rid of fingerprints where they can link them to the car. But they don't have to get those fingerprints to link you to the car because they have you in 4K at a McDonald's, at a Holiday Inn, at Teasers, on the camera driving to Jackson, to Tampa. They have you. So, Wiping down a car is nothing. You probably should have broke the cameras on the highway. I'm just playing. Um, Andrew's phone placed it at Teasers at the time she was seen on camera there as a passenger of the cruise and later seen exiting the cruise. Andrew's call detail records show communications to Sean Gothright's phone while at Teasers. Andrew's phone tracked to T Truth 18 nightclub at the same time she was seen on camera at that location. Andrew's phone also tracked to the homicide scene at the same time the cruise was seen on camera there. <sighs> man, oh man. Y'all, it seems like we kind of get what happened here. Alicia provided a post-Miranda statement where she identified herself in all the footage she, she was seen in and identified Isaiah Chance as the male driving the suspect vehicle. She's talking. From from the jump, she's talking, placing herself at the scene, placing Gutterzay at the scene. Andrews admitted to allowing Isaiah Chance to use her phone while he communicates to Sean Gothright. So they're thinking because they're not talking on their phones to each other that if someone were to pull the call records, they wouldn't be able to confirm that they were on the phone talking to each other. But Alicia is going to confirm that you used her phone. And you used her phone to call Sean and Sean this and that. So, Alicia Andrews denied knowledge of this homicide and was caught lying multiple times during her interview. We know she's going to try to lie, but she's clearly not that smart because she wouldn't have been out there participating in something of this magnitude. Do you really think this girl didn't know that it was such and such, such as in the car? Did she really think that they were just getting in all black, putting on ski masks? To go to Disney World. Well, go to Bush Gardens. All right. It also travels down from Jacksonville at the same time as the others. So they're basically confirming that she was with them the entire time. She was definitely there. So we're going to move on past this. Because we know she was there. She's on camera. She made phone calls. She's on the Airbnb. Like, it's you were there. No doubt about it. Isaiah Chance's phone was not active since he primarily used Alicia's phone. So Gutterzay thought he was being smart by not using his phone and using Alicia's phone, thinking that it wouldn't link back. I'm, I'm telling y'all, they thought they was being smart, but they really wasn't. Okay, the motive for this homicide is tied to an ongoing feud spanning years between Charles Jones' six-block gang and two rival games, ATK and 1200 Allied Together. Well, he kept saying y'all had to click up to get him. And right now, it's looking like y'all had to click up to get him. All right, Isaiah Chance is a documented ATK. I thought he was NHG. ATK gang member and defendant. But well, I guess ATK and NHG might be the same thing. And defendants Rashad Murphy and Davion Murphy are documented 1,200 gang members. Hmm. It was apparent the defendants worked together acting in a concert to actively hunt and ultimately kill Charles Jones as part of this gang feud. The medical examiner determined the cause of death for Charles Jones to be a homicide. We know that. We know that. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. We on page 17, y'all. We wrapping it up. We wrapping it up. But I am going to go back because I think I probably did skip over something. I wanted y'all to know about those vehicles. But you know what? How long this is? Damn, we had 34 minutes on a vehicle. We're, on this video, we're going to wrap this up. 
All right, sufficiently protect the community from the risk of physical harm to persons the defendant and his co-defendants track and stalk the victim Charles Jones to three separate public locations in Hillsborough County with the intent of killing him by utilizing three gunmen who were heavily armed. There were innocent citizens located at all three locations, and that's true. That's true. That's the biggest thing, you know. As people that's not involved in y'all gang drama, we shouldn't have to go outside and feel like we just going to be innocent bystanders that get hit because of this crap. Because of this crap. I know y'all don't care about people. Y'all don't care about people mamas. And you sure don't care about somebody you don't know. But this y'all problems. Go to Iraq, Afghanistan and hash it out. Not where innocent people are. All right, y'all. I did want to find a part of this that I did take a look at earlier. Um, and basically, the part that I'm looking for is where it says Alicia was communicating with a male while she was at the scene. Like she was communicating with a male that was a part of Julio, um, a part of Julio's crew. So they don't list who the male is. They don't give the name of that person. But they do say she was also communicating with him back and forth. Oh, God, y'all, my mic falling in shit. Okay, so we got through this. Basically, this case is shut. Online, you may see it as being open, but ultimately, this case is shut. They have weapons. They have video proof, audio proof. They have... Aside from them being on video, they also have black and white tag numbers, connections to the vehicles. They watched them for a period of time before actually arresting them to confirm that they had the vehicles, showed them in close proximity, utilizing the vehicles. Like I said, one person, uh, Rashad Murphy, he used his mom's car. So it's just a lot. And it's almost like, other people are probably going to go to jail because they hired these flunkies to take out someone that was so great. And I keep saying it and I'm going to keep saying it for that one life. Y'all are giving up a minimum of five because quite honestly, I believe there's more people going to be arrested. There's definitely going to be more arrested. You know what? Y'all I have to stop skipping through this document because I am missing some important parts, and it's only because I got stuff to do, y'all. But I want to make sure the important things are covered. So, here we go. We're going to hit this part. There was evidence that Rashad Murphy likely did not have his own phone during his time in Tampa. He left his phone home. Gutterze had his phone but was not utilizing his phone, but he was still pinging on the towers. The iCloud warrant on Sean Gothright's phone revealed at approximately 12.58 hours and 13.01 hours on 6-23-2024, Gothright's phone messaged two separate numbers while they were still at the Airbnb in Tampa. One message read, I'm coming home, my thirst is quenched. I'll pop a bottle of Don Julio today. Murphy. This is Rashad or Davion messaging from Sean's phone. To the second person they text, and the other message read, I'm coming home. My thirst is quenched. I love you. Murphy. Whoever they sent them two text messages to. Whoever. Whoever. Five in the morning got a call. Who is this? Thirst be quenched. Whoever. The two people where they got these messages. Y'all count on it coming out soon. Because they are in some serious trouble. It's no way anybody involved in this case can get out of it. It's no way. It's no cer What you have is circumstantial evidence. But this isn't circumstantial evidence. This is hardcore it's not speculative it's none of that this is hardcore evidence where they have these people they have them they cannot get out of this and the two other people who they text they got you and if y'all got money from other people to pay them 
they gonna have them and quite honestly it seems like this messy 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 act they carried out is probably going to put a lot of people in Jacksonville in jail which probably needs to happen because I prefer people to be safe they, people work too hard pay too much money to live and have to be worrying about burying their kids because y'all want to be able to move up in a gang that don't do nothing for y'all these people all have public defenders right now how much did y'all get paid for Julio five dollars they all have public defenders it's just ridiculous all right y'all thanks for watching like comment subscribe